obviously you're in the educational business, which is yep. the core infrastructure. So how do you see his so, education evolving and growing? And so two things, two yeah. or three things. Yeah. First, the current model of education doesn't work. Sure. And the reason is that we've trained all our educational systems are trained to uh, uh, give kids skills through their early 20s to be ready for the existing job market. Right? Except we don't know what a job looks like in five years. What the hell are we teaching? So yeah. a minor problem there. Um, but you take something like GitHub, where you can rank each other's uh, software code and give you, you can give me a Yelp review on my code and so on. Um, today in Silicon Valley, your salary as a software developer has zero correlation anymore to which university you went to, which degree you got, or what grades you got. It's 100% what's your GitHub rating. So the value of a computer science degree just went to zero. Right? Because why would you get, why don't you spend hundreds of thousand of dollars on a, on a computer science degree when my salary depends on Take this? Take it out by GitHub. Not that, yeah. Okay, so that's one. Um, but more importantly, at a more structural level, and one thing we noticed at Singularity was that if you are doing a master's degree in any of these areas that we cover, like biotech or advanced robotics or neuroscience, literally by the time you finish your master's in neuroscience, you're out of date. Mm. Because our ability to teach the subject can't keep pace with the changes in the area. That's a structural issue. We need a totally different paradigm. And the way we deal with it, dealt with the singularity was saying we're going to spend 80% of our curriculum teaching the future and what so we think will come. So you're practiced in this conversation rather than what happened in the past or how did this model happen, how did this equation develop. Right? And if you're a leader, you need to be somewhat practiced in what's mm. coming in, in the future. So education fundamentally breaks in this model. Uh, the way we guide our son is, and what we recommend for, and what we're seeing more and more, is you don't give the kid a, a skill set. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't say, okay, go be an accountant or go be a lawyer or you seem a little bit artistic, go do whatever. You, you help them find their native passion for what problem they want to solve, right? Let them, let them uh, uh, and there's now new schooling Experiment movements and, where mm -hmm. people say, okay, you're, the curriculum of your, class, your kid will be chosen by what does he want to do when he grows up? So the kid goes, I want to be a fireman. Great, that means you need to know chemistry and physics and safety equipment and teamwork. And they give them the skills for that level. Mm. And so you give them skills for a social cohesion first and then let them build hard skills later because you, don't, you can't teach them hard skills now and then find out 10 years later that mm. those hard skills don't matter anymore. Mm. Right? So we have them in a pretty interesting school. Um, the reason we're here in Canada is we put them temporarily in the school and after an hour he goes, I'm never leaving. We're like, wait, no, 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 we just came up here temporarily. And he, after a week, we're like, what do you think? He goes, so he never liked leaving. the school so much. He, he's never leaving that school. After That's a week, a we said, problem. how do you like the school? You go, never leaving. And, and the, wow. so one day he comes home from school. What did you learn at school today? And he goes, he was five. He goes, I learned how to control my impulsivity. And we're like, That's fantastic. Just go right, just, you just go right back to school. And so I'm, uh, the worst thing I could do, the worst thing we could do as parents is to, to say to kids, do more mathematics or more reading because mm. that's how we grew up, right? Their world is totally different. They need to operate and navigate their world in the way that works best for their upbringing, not for what we went through. And this is the enormous tension that we have around the world. We see this is the tension in society is that we, our natural habit is to take what was done before and whack it in and it, and it doesn't apply. Because it feels safe, it's risk yeah. averse, it's all the things that we've been emotionally and, and cognitively it, trained to do. Exactly. Right. So in regards to technology with Singularity University, how, what role do you guys play in this entire movement? And what do you think would be other solutions in regards to like early education and all these other things? So that, um, we, we've kind of, we focused yeah. on higher education yeah. for the specific reason that this next 20, 30 years of, uh, of, gonna of is, is, going to, is going to be huge. We need better leadership to run mm. the world, right? Okay. So I have kind of four observations about the world. One is that we have these 20 Gutenberg moments. Number two, this is breaking every institution, okay? Uh, number three is we see things much more implemented at a city level rather than nation level. And number four is, as we talked about, is our current leaders cannot make this transition. All of our existing leadership is trained to operate in a predictable, stable, linear, uh, scarcity, um, incremental world. Mm. And the train is pulling into Black Swan Central. Mm. Right? So we need totally new leadership. Okay? If we need new leadership, and it's, it's a 20, 30 year period, then let's get the 25, 30 year olds that are going to be running the world in the next five to 10 years and give them this training as to what's coming with society. And when they go back to their home countries, they hopefully will make better decisions than the current crop of leaders today. Okay? And so that was the first thing. Get the 
graduate students that will be running the world. So when we have 5,000 applicants every year for 80 slots, we're really trying to pick for who do we think is running those countries. So they have the most And, and then send them back. Okay? And that's the phase one. Phase two, which is what I'm working on now, is how do you now transition our legacy institutional structures, first organizations, but, but then institutions like journalism, education, et cetera. So the, let's take journalism. What I'd like to do next and what we're working on now is let's get all of the uh, top thinkers in that space together and figure out what should it look like in 20 years because we don't have a good view of that in any mm. of these domains. And then we have some place to aim for. Mm. And then we can bring technology and other things to bear. So you can that. orient the whole yeah. industry towards Right now, it. we kind of stumble along and go, oh, blockchain, oh, social media, and we're retroactively fighting things, mm. right? Whereas we should kind of get ahead of it and say, okay, we know what's coming in technology. What should education look like in 20 years? What should journalism look like in 20 years? What should um, uh, voting systems and what should democracy look like? Rather than constantly fighting from a rear guard a mm. perspective and fighting the legacy and fighting the backwards, we should be fighting forwards. And so what I want to do now is create a cohort and an ecosystem over the top couple of thousand kind of, you know, TED fellows and Davos Young Global Leaders and Singularity alumni and give them tools where they can envision for the area they're most interested in, figure out what that looks like, and then that will create the kind of intellectual framework for what the world needs to look like next. That's beautiful. I, it's, I think it's, it's such an amazing, um, because you're making an impact at such a, at such a distributed level that is going to have a network effect upon everything else when you're teaching those leaders and you're, when you're having them be equipped to deal with the world. Hope, uh, if we succeed. Uh, yeah. Also yeah. means I'm bald from the stress of it all. But they're yeah, 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 yeah. But they're doing fine.